people now understand the true meaning of gun-free zone? A, it isn't. B, the true nomenclature should be DVZ. That's called Designated Victim Zone or Mass Murder Empowerment Zone. Yet some tyrants in waiting think all of America should be a complete gun-free zone or mass murder empowerment zone. Gun control, take the rights away from those who didn't do anything, disarm everyone. Of course, uh, ink and paper from the media would nearly necessarily have to go first uh, and be the first casualties so as to not alert the masses. Madmen and terrorists would love it. Makes no sense to most of us. I used to live in London in 1975, and it was so safe back then that you didn't see very many bodies on the street, and they didn't carry guns. Now something has changed that society. The New York Sun and the Washington Post verifies our Guns Save Lives memo when it stated, oh, there it is, when it stated that after London's gun turn-in, the gun ban laws, uh, and gun ban laws, violent crime went up six times higher than that of New York City. It appears that firearms <coughs> might have been an element in keeping the lid on violence. Uh, another perspective is Florida. Florida, with a crime rate of 36% above the national average, and there might have been a lot of mitigating circumstances there, uh, immigrants, drugs, trafficking, but, be that as it may, in 1987, it became the first shall-issue, concealed-carry, handgun state in the Union. By 2011, uh, crime dropped to 37% below the national average to its lowest point in their recorded records. Concealed-carry lowers crime a lot. Guns save lives. Uh, and here's some visual proof, uh, three pictures, uh, graphs of Florida crime data. If you can see this on camera, this is Florida, and the murder rates went down. In the center is a line that shows when the gun ban went into effect, and you can see that murder rates took an immediate drop. The second chart is um, violent crime rate. It took an immediate drop after concealed carry. Um, a decade later, uh, the rape rates sort of went south significantly and then leveled off. And for all the other states, um, this is the general picture throughout the other 49 and a half states with concealed carry laws. As more and more states in the country became had concealed carry laws, you can see the pink line drifts up to 49 and a half. The blue line shows the drop of crime simultaneously. The figures aren't accurate, it's just a general description of the trends of that curve. Interestingly, the curves I just showed you, the exact opposite occurred in Australia when they eliminated all firearms. Uh, I have some pictures if people would like to see them afterwards, but you can go to the aic.gov.au. That's AIC, that's Australia Institute of Criminology.gov, so you know it's the equivalent of our FBI figures. You can see the charts of murder, rape, and assault. Uh, it appears that firearms might have been an element in keeping the lid on, violent, on, on violence in Australia. <clears throat> in the U.S., the government and media have been buzzing for five years about the Virginia Tech shooting as another excuse that they should use to grab all citizens' guns. Well, the shooter was a known Looney Tune, yet that documentation not not yet in the FBI database, uh, did not prevent his purchasing a firearm. But five years earlier, in January of 2002, another school, Appalachian College, a life-saving story unfolds. 
a foreign student turned mad killer, was merely upset over his grades. Um, so he shot the dean, murdered three, wounded three more, um, but it was two responsible students that raced to their cars, got their licensed handguns, and confronted the criminal before he could turn that college into the first Virginia Tech. In one newspaper clipping that I saved, the student guns were not even mentioned in the story. Some just love to leave that part out of the story. Was that honest and unbiased coverage? In fact, the students didn't even have to shoot their guns. They merely brandished their firearms, then tackled the killer. That is courageous and responsible gun ownership. How about more responsible media reporting? So, for an expose about the truth in, uh, for the expose about the true concern for children in schools, I would like to make this uh, observation. This is the most powerful school message I have learned, maybe since forever. Before the Sandy Hook tragedy in Ohio, the Buckeye Firearms Association had a curriculum, a curriculum established to provide armed security training for schools, teachers, and administrators. 